Well, hello there. Welcome to Fortunate. This is Kim. I'm getting on day 256. The um, We're getting into day 256 in Daniel 1 through 3. So go with me to Daniel 1 through 3. Let's pray and get into it, Lord. We thank you for this day, September 13th, and we thank you, Lord, that we are reading through the Bible in a year, and it's Daniel 1 through 3, and we thank you there that your word is life and it's going to bring health and and um, prosperity to us in every way and health. Lord, you have come to heal us. You are our healer. You are our provider. You are our protector. You come to comfort. You are here. Your word is here and your spirit is alive and, and, and moving upon this earth. The glory of God is here. And we just thank you, Holy Spirit, for being here on this earth. And as Jesus even prayed that when he went to the Father, he said, right before he went and ascended, he said, Lord, protect them, for they are here on the earth, and the, enemy, the evil one is here, but protect them from the evil one, because they are not of this world. They're, not in, they're in the world, but they're not of the world. So, Lord, we just thank you that your word is alive to us, and you've given us your word, you've given us your spirit, and we can roar like a lion. And we can be mighty upon this earth in in the spirit of God. And we just bless you in Jesus' name. Amen. Now let's get to Daniel. All right, Daniel 1. We're going to read Daniel 1, 2, and 3. So how, praise God. All righty, praise the Lord. I'm getting into it here. Daniel 1 through 3, ready? Daniel. Nebuchadnezzar besieges Jerusalem. That's the title. In the third year of the reign, the reign of Jehoiakim, king of Judah, Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, came to Jerusalem and besieged it. And the Lord gave Jehoiakim, king of Judah, into his hand with some of the articles of the house of God, which he carried into the land of Shinar, to the house of his God. And he brought the articles into the treasury house of his God. <clears throat> Daniel in Nebuchadnezzar's court now. Then the king instructed the master of his eunuchs to bring some of the children of Israel and some of the king's descendants and some of the nobles, the young men in whom there was no blemish, but good looking, gifted in all wisdom, possessing knowledge and quick to understand, who had ability to serve in the king's palace and whom they might teach the language and literature of the Chaldeans. And the king appointed for them a daily provision of the king's delicacies, of the wine which he drank in the three years of training for them, so that at the end of that time they might serve before the king. Now from among those of the sons of Judah were Daniel, Hananiah, Mishael, Azariah. To them the chief of the eunuchs gave names. He gave Daniel the name Belhazar, to Hanai, Shadrach, to Mishael, Meshach and to Azara Obed Nego. But Daniel purposed in his heart that he would not defile himself with the portion of the king's delicacies, nor with the wine which he drank. Therefore he requested of the chief of the eunuchs that he might not defile himself. Now God had brought Daniel into the favor and goodwill of the chief of the eunuchs. And the chief of the eunuchs said to Daniel, I fear my Lord, the king who has appointed your food and drink, for why should he see your faces looking worse than the young men who are your age? Then you would endanger my head before the king. So Daniel said to the steward, whom the chief of the eunuchs had set over, Daniel and Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, please test your servants for 10 days and let them give us vegetables to eat and water to drink. Then. Let our appearance be examined before you, the appearance of the young men who eat the portion of the king's delicacies, and as you see fit, so deal with your servants. So he consented with them in this matter and tested them ten days. At the end of the ten days, their features appeared better and fatter in flesh than all the young men who ate the portion of the king's delicacies. Thus the steward took away their portion. of delicacies and the wine that they were to drink and gave them vegetables. 
As for these four young men, God gave them knowledge and skill in all literature and wisdom. And Daniel had understanding in all visions and dreams. Now at the end of the days, when the king had said that they should be brought in, the chief of the eunuchs brought them in before Nebuchadnezzar. Then the king interviewed them, and among them all, none we found was like Daniel, Hanai, Mishal, Azariah, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Therefore they served before the king and in all manners of wisdom and understanding, about which the king examined them. He found them ten times better than all the magicians and astrologers who were in all his realm. Thus Daniel continued until the first year of King Cyrus. Chapter 2 Nebuchadnezzar's Dream Now in the second year of Nebuchadnezzar's return, or reign, Nebuchadnezzar had dreams, and his spirit was so troubled that his sleep left him. Then the king gave the command to call the magicians, the astrologers, the sorcerers, the Chaldeans, to tell the king his dream. So they came and stood before the king, and the king said to them, I have had a dream, and my spirit is anxious to know the dream. When the Chaldeans spoke to the king of Aram in Aramic, O king, live forever. Tell your servants the dream, and we will give the interpretation. The king answered and said to the Chaldeans, My decision is firm. If you do not make known the dream to me and its interpretation, you shall be cut in pieces, and your house shall be made as a heap. However, if you tell the dream and its interpretation, you shall receive from me gifts, rewards, and great honor. Therefore, tell me the dream and its interpretation. They answered again and said, Let the king tell his servant the dream, and we will give its interpretation. The king answered and said, I know for certain that you would gain time because you see that my decision is firm. If you do not make known the dream to me, there is only one decree for you. For you have agreed to speak lying and corrupt words before me till the time is changed. Therefore, tell me the dream and I shall know that you can give me its interpretation. The Chaldeans answered the king and said, There is not a man on earth who can tell the king's matter. Therefore, no king, lord, or ruler has ever asked such things of a magician or astrologer or Chaldean. It is a difficult thing that the king requests, and there is no other who can tell it to the king except the gods whose dwelling is not with flesh. For this reason, the king was angry and very furious and gave the command to destroy all the wise men of Babylon. So the decree went out, and they began killing the wise men, and they sought Daniel and his companions to kill them. Then, with counsel and wisdom, Daniel answered Arioch, the captain of the king's guard, who had gone out to kill the wise men of Babylon. He answered and said to Arioch, the king's captain, Why is the decree from the king so urgent? Then Arioch made the decision known to Daniel. So Daniel went in and asked the king to give him time that he might tell the king the interpretation. Then Daniel went to his house and made the decision known to Hananiah, Mishal, Azariah, his companions, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, that they might seek mercy from the God of heaven concerning this secret so that Daniel and his companions might not perish with the rest of the wise men in Babylon. Then the secret was revealed to Daniel. God let Daniel know the secret. That's what he does when we are with him, when we are one with him. Then the secret was revealed to Daniel in a night vision. So Daniel blessed the God of heaven. He looked to God, not astrology or psychic or any of these other things, other gods, other than God. God said, I will only have one, there's only one God and there's only one God to honor and to worship. And look at Daniel went to the right God. He went to Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, Father God, Jehovah. Daniel answered and said, Blessed be the name of God forever and ever, for wisdom and might are his. So he first gave glory to God anyway, even if they didn't believe in God. And he changed, he, and he changes times and seasons, Daniel says. He removes kings and raises up kings. He gives wisdom to the wise and knowledge to those who have understanding. He reveals deep and secret things. 
He knows what is in the darkness and light dwells with him. I thank you and praise you, O God of my fathers. You have given me wisdom and might and have now made known to me what we asked of you. For you have made known to us the king's demand. He gave God the glory. Now verse 24, here's the interpretation. Therefore Daniel went to Arioch, whom the king had appointed to destroy the wise men of Babylon. He went and said thus to him, Do not destroy the wise men of Babylon. Take me before the king, and I will tell the king the interpretation. So he even saved others from getting destroyed because he went to God and asked Jehovah, What is the interpretation? And God told him. Then Arioch quickly brought Daniel before the king and said thus to him, I have found a man of the captives of Judah who will make known to the king the interpretation. The king answered and said to Daniel, whose name was Belazar, Are you able to make known to me the dream which I have seen and its interpretation? Daniel answered in the presence of the king and said, The secret which the king has demanded, the wise men, the astrologers, the magicians, and the soothsayers cannot declare to the king. But there is a God in heaven who reveals secrets and has made known to King Nebuchadnezzar what will be in the latter days. Your dream and the visions of your head upon your bed were these. As for you, O king, thoughts came to your mind while on your bed about what would come to pass after this. And he who reveals secrets has made known to you what will be. But as for me, this secret has not been revealed to me because I have more wisdom than anyone living. But for our sakes, who makes known the interpretation to the king, and that you may know the thoughts of, our, of your heart. You, O king, were watching, and behold, a great image. This great image, was, whose splendor was excellent, stood before you, and its form was awesome. This image's head was of fine gold, its chest and arms of silver, its belly and thighs of bronze, its legs of iron, its feet par partly of iron and partly of clay. You watched while a stone was cut out without hands, which struck the image on its feet of iron and clay and broke them in pieces. Then the iron, the clay, the bronze, the silver, and the gold were crushed together and became like chaff from the summer threshing floors. The wind carried them away so that no trace of them was found. And the stone that struck the image became a great mountain and filled the whole earth. This is the dream. Now we will tell the interpretation of it before the king. You, O king, are a king of kings. For the God of heaven has given you a kingdom, power, strength, and glory. And wherever the children of men dwell, or the beasts of the field and the birds of the heaven, he has given them into your hand and has made you ruler over them all. You are this head of gold. But after you shall arise another king inferior to yours, then another, a third kingdom of, then another, wait a minute. He has made you ruler over them all. You are his head of gold, but after you shall arise another kingdom inferior to yours, then another, a third kingdom of bronze, which shall rule over all the earth. And the fourth kingdom shall be as strong as iron, inasmuch as iron breaks in pieces and shatters everything. And like iron that crushes, that kingdom will break in pieces and crush all the others. Whereas you saw the feet and toes partly of potter's clay and iron, partly iron, the kingdom shall be divided, yet the strength of the iron shall be in it, just as you saw the iron mixed with ceramic clay. And as the toes of the feet were partly of iron and partly of clay, so the kingdom shall be partly strong and partly fragile. And as you saw iron mixed with ceramic clay, they will mingle with the seed of men, but they will not adhere to one another, just as iron does not mix with clay. And in the days of these kings, the God of heaven will set up a kingdom which will never be destroyed, and the kingdom shall not be left to other people. It shall break in pieces and consume all these kingdoms, and it shall stand forever. Inasmuch as you saw that the stone was cut out of the mountain without hands, and it broke in pieces, the iron, the bronze, the clay, the silver, and the gold, the great God had made known to the king what will come to pass after this. The dream is certain and its interpretation is true. Verse 14.
46. Then King Nebuchadnezzar fell on his face, prostrate, prostrate before Daniel, and commanded that they should present an offering and incense to him. The king answered Daniel and said, Truly your God is the God of gods, the Lord of kings, a revealer of secrets. Since you could reveal the secret, then the king promoted Daniel and gave him many great gifts, and he made him ruler over the whole providence of Babylon and chief administrator over all the wise men of Babylon. Also Daniel petitioned the king, and he set Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego over the affairs of the providence of Babylon. But Daniel sat in the gate of the king. This is awesome. Now chapter 3. Nebuchadnezzar's image of gold. Nebuchadnezzar the king made an image of gold whose height was 60 cubits and its width 6 cubits. He set it up in the plain of Dura in the providence of Babylon. And King Nebuchadnezzar sent word to gather together the satraps, the administrators, the governors, the counselors, the treasurers, the judges, the magistrates, and all the officials of the providence to come to the dedication of the image which King Nebuchadnezzar had set up. So the satraps, the administrators, the governors, counselors, treasurers, judges, magistrates, the officials of the providence gathered together for the dedication of the image that King Nebuchadnezzar set up. And they stood before the image that Nebuchadnezzar set up. Then he herald cried out, To you it is commanded, O people, nations, and language, that at the time you hear the sound of the horn, the flute, the harp, the lyre, and the psaltery, in symphony with all kinds of music, you shall fall down and worship the gold image that King Nebuchadnezzar has set up. And whoever does not fall down and worship shall be cast immediately into the midst of the burning fire furnace. So at that time, when all the people heard the sound of the horn, the flute, the harp, the lyre, in symphony with all kinds of music, all the people, nations, and languages fell down and worshipped the gold image which King Nebuchadnezzar had set up. Therefore, at that time, certain Chaldeans came forward and accused the Jews. They spoke and said to King Nebuchadnezzar, O king, live forever. You, O king, have made a decree that everyone who hears the sound of the horn the flute, the harp, the lyre, the psaltery, in symphony with all kinds of music shall fall down and worship the gold image, and whoever does not fall down and worship shall be cast into the midst of the burning fiery furnace. There are certain Jews whom you have set over the affairs of the providence of Babylon, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. These men, O king, have not paid due regard to you. They do not serve your gods or worship the gold image which you have set up. See the way the enemy is working against the people of God. Then Nebuchadnezzar, in rage and fury, gave the command to bring Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. So they brought the men before the king. Nebuchadnezzar spoke, saying to them, Is it true, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, that you do not serve my God or worship the gold image which I have set up? Now, if you are ready at the time you hear the sound of the horn, flute, harp, lyre, and psaltery, in symphony with all kinds of music, and you fall down and worship the image, which I have made good. But if you do not worship, you shall be cast immediately into the midst of the burning, fiery furnace. And who is the God who will deliver you from my hands? Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego answered and said to the king, O Nebuchadnezzar, we have no need to answer you in this matter. If that is the case, our God, whom we serve, is able to deliver us from the burning fiery furnace, and he will deliver us from your hand, O king. But if not, let it be known to you, O king, that we do not serve your gods, nor will we worship the gold image which you have set up. Praise the Lord. Now, chapter, now verse 19, the blazing furnace. Then Nebuchadnezzar was full of fury, and the expression on his face changed toward Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. He spoke and commanded that they heat the furnace seven times more than it was usually heated. And he commanded certain mighty men of valor who were in his army to bind Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego and cast them into the burning, fiery furnace. Then these men were bound in their coats, their trousers, their turbans, their garments, and were cast into the midst of the burning, fiery furnace. Therefore, because the king's command was urgent 
and the furnace exceedingly hot, the flame of the fire killed the men who took up Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And these three men, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, fell down, bound into the midst of the burning, fiery furnace. Then King Nebuchadnezzar was astonished, and he rose in haste and spoke, saying to his counselors, Did we not cast three men bound into the midst of the fire? They answered and said to the king, True, O king. Look, he answered, I see four men lo loose, walking in the midst of the fire, and they are not hurt. And the form of the fourth is like the Son of God. Then Nebuchadnezzar went near the mouth of the burning fiery furnace and spoke, saying, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, servants of the Most High God, come out, come here. Then Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego came from the midst of the fire, and the satraps, administrators, governors, and king's counselors gathered together, and they saw these men on whose bodies the fire had no power. The hair of their head was not singed, nor were their garments affected, and the smell of fire was not on them. Nebuchadnezzar spoke, saying, Blessed be the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, who sent his angel and delivered his servants, who trusted in him. And they have frustrated the king's word and yielded their bodies, that they should not serve nor worship any god except their own god, Therefore, I make a decree that any people, nation, or language which speaks against the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego shall be cut in pieces and their houses shall be made in ash heap because there is no other God who can deliver like this. Then the king promoted Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego in the providence of Babylon. Praise the Lord, and that's it. Praise you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. So, Lord, we just lift this up to you. We thank you, Father, for this word to us. Thank you, Father, that even now, as things are going on in the world, the thing that came to me is, you know, if if that we will not serve any other gods. Even now, when there's things happening and people making mandates and things that to take shots and to put on masks and do these things. Father God, we thank you that the government will be upon your shoulder, it says. Your shoulder. The government will be upon your shoulder. Wonderful counselor, mighty God, everlasting Father, Prince of Peace, and the government will be upon your shoulder. And so, Father, we thank you that you are in control of everything. And yes, we obey the decrees and the laws that are given, but if it's to turn and and have fear of man or fear of of any idol or look to any idol or fear man then it's not your will Lord because your will is for us to worship and follow you and you only and stay in communion with you and in complete relationship with you Father God so we look to you right now and we say no to the things that that the government at this time wants us to follow their way because they're trying to put fear and change our thinking and, and put make everybody be robots because they want to control or to or to you know there's a money there's a power struggle here there's a there's a greed struggle so father we just thank you that our god is not the god of money our god is not the god of power but our god is god almighty the god of shadrach meshach and abednego and so father we will stand our ground no matter what we will stand our ground if we're in the armed forces we will stand our ground if we are in any places where our job is so important because we have to pay a certain amount lord god we will stand our ground we will stand our ground because we will not allow the wickedness of this world to pull us in and say, you can only worship this. You can only, you can't worship your God. You have to worship our God. You have to worship the God of money and power because that's what we want. We want you to do what we want you to do. So Father, we thank you that we are in right step with God. We are in right step with you, with the with the commands of the, you know, of the government that, that keep us in line and keep us straight 
paying to Caesar what is Caesar's, like Jesus said. But we will not bow to an ungodly king, an ungodly um, ruler saying that you can only worship uh, the God of money or the God of power. And so, Father, we just thank you that we will not fear what man can do. We do not fear man. And that is a sin to fear man, to, to fear man, because we're afraid because we might lose our job or our, our position. Father God, we stand our ground and we thank you that you will turn it for good. And Father, just as Nebuchadnezzar, King Nebuchadnezzar saw, saw the, that they had someone in the fire with them, he saw that it turned and he said, now the enemy's word that was coming to hurt the very people of God were turned to hurt the enemy. And he said, now anyone who comes against Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego's God, he will be killed. He will be executed. So Father, we thank you that you turn all things for good. And as we stand our ground, we stand in faith and we believe. We stand with love. We stand in peace. We stand with no fear. <coughs> we stand trusting that you will take care of us and you will turn what the enemy meant for evil. You will turn to good. We bless you right now. Thank you for coming. Remember, your words are your way to victory. I'll see you tomorrow on Portunate.